Welcome to the 2021 Warren County Black History Month program, sponsored by the Black History Museum of Warren County, Tennessee. I'm Mickey Gwynn, and I'll be your host for this year's event. As you can tell, this year's program is a little bit different than the ones we've had in the past. A year ago, most of us would not have imagined that our nation would be in the grip of a deadly pandemic and we would be forced to hold our event virtually. But here we are. We all miss the social interactions we've had in previous years, but we hope you will enjoy this year's socially distanced format. And we are praying that next year, we can once again gather to celebrate our nation's black history. To formally begin our program, we'll now provide an opening prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and for its many blessings that you have given unto us. The privilege that you have waking us up this morning, given us life in the body once again. Thankful for this opportunity and this privilege that we have to be able to come together and to be able to recognize the Black History Day. And we're thankful, Father, to be able to bow our heads together in prayer and thank, and thank you for the blessings of life that the many ones that has gone on before us and for what they represent and what they mean to us today and throughout all the days of our lives and for the lessons that we can learn from those Father, who have gone on before us and realizing the things that they went through in the lifetime that they was here when they was on, the, on this earth and Father, the many things that they suffered and many things they went through. But we're thankful to know, dear God, it was Jesus who came down from glory. And Father, because of mankind, he made it possible that it was possible for all of us in this world to have the same opportunity and have the same privilege, O oh God, that we might be a people that can come together and we can be a people that can serve you and worship you in spirit and in truth. And we're thankful for those who have fought, had a foresight for this history month and for the things that they have done, for the work and effort they had put into this privilege of day, uh, that we all can be able to come together and, and to come and to recognize and to remember and to look and see the history uh, that we can see that has gone through this world of people. And Father, we can look back and see our ancestors, uh, some of the pictures and things that we see that are, are dedicated to this occasion. And we can see, Father, for the time that we came up as, as teenagers and as young people and the things that we learned from this and the things that, Father, we even go through today, knowing, Father, that again, that it was your son Jesus came that we all might have the right to the tree of life. And Father, we pray for those that are, are representing this to, in, in a way that it would help all of us throughout the country. And for the meanings of life that we, as we see these and as we learn from this, that the meaning that it has to us and the things that we can learn from our ancestors and the things that they have left behind, their remembrance and all, and, and our children all that has been brought up, Father, those that never did get to meet their families and be able to see their pictures and be able to understand their relationships and know one another. And Father, we just want to say, we well, thank you thank you for that privilege and for those that are here, not only just for being here, but having a mindset of being able to uh, represent people throughout the world from the beginning of life, even to this present day, Father. And Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus, that he made it possible through him that we can have eternal life, dear God. And we just Thankful for uh, our families and uh, loved ones, our kids and all that, who are yet coming on and, and who never knew anything about this, who never knew their ancestors and all, but thankful for this place here that had been set aside for the Black History Day, that we all can come together and we can sit down and we can discuss and we can talk about things together, recognizing the people that we knew that has gone on and people, Father, that, that represented us that we as young people that will be able to continue on doing this kind of thing today, that we all will always understand that there is a place that one day we'll all be able to meet together again and be that we can be able to see one another and that place is called heaven. When you call us from this place from labor to reward, that we'll all be able to join hand together and recognize one another. In Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen. We are honored to have two local government officials who will present proclamations and statements 
commemorating Black History Month in Warren County and McMinnville. First, the County Executive of Warren County, Tennessee, Mr. Jimmy Haley. Good day, Warren County. As we recognize the contributions of Martin Luther King and those who champion the idea of the self-evident truth that our own men are created equal, let us reflect upon the diversity of our country and the contributions that each and every person has made over the course of our history. And even though we've had trials and tribulations that have torn our nation apart, we have endured as a symbol of freedom around the world. And despite the challenges of civil war to civil rights, the long fought journey to freedom has been difficult. And even though we have come a long way over the course of those years, we have not come far enough to deliver the ideas of freedom that we take each and every time we do the pledge to our flag, that we are one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So with that, I want to read a proclamation uh, honoring Black History Month and to some of the contributions that our citizens have made over the years. Whereas during the month of February each year, the United States celebrates the successive achievements of African Americans and respectfully salutes their impact on our nation's heritage. And whereas in 1915, Dr. Carter G. Woodson, a noted scholar and son of former slaves, initiated Black History Week, which was later to be recognized internationally as Black History Month. And whereas across the years, African Americans have made significant contributions to our economic, political, military, cultural, spiritual, and social development, both home and abroad. And whereas locally, an iconic and modern educational institution erected with the assistance of the influential Rosenwald Foundation and named for its agent, O.H. Bernard, opened its doors to children of color in McMinnville in 1922. And whereas many citizens of note were educated at Bernard School, including Ambassador Carl T. Rowan, who attributed his success to his childhood school and its staff of exceptional teachers. Whereas Bernard's school was destroyed by fire in 1946 and quickly rebuilt to become a mainstay of the local school system, flourishing during the pivotal years of desegregation and beyond until it was closed and finally raised in 1982. And whereas it's only befitting that a grateful community and a gesture of greater humanity recognize those monuments that commemorate significant chapters in our history. Therefore, I, County Executive Jimmy Haley, do hereby proclaim February 2021 as Black History Month across Warren County in a ceremony dedicating a historical marker to Menard School. And furthermore, we encourage all of our residents to join us in this month-long celebration of diversity as we strive to create a world that is more just and inclusive of all people. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Haley. Now, the mayor of McMinnville, Ryle Chastain. It is widely established throughout our country that the month of February is recognized as Black History Month. In conjunction with County Mayor Jimmy Haley and the County of Warren, I have written a proclamation on behalf of the city that reads as follows. Whereas, during the month of February each year, the United States celebrates the significant accomplishments of African Americans and commemorates their impacts on our nation's history and heritage, and whereas many individuals of color have made positive impacts in communities throughout McMinnville and Warren County over the years, and whereas in 1922 the Bernard School Building was erected as an educational institution for African American children with the help of the Rosenwald Foundation and named appropriately for its agent, O. H. Bernard, and whereas in 1946 the original structure burned and was rebuilt in 1947 where it currently stands. And whereas many individuals in McMinnville and Warren County and their families were educated at the Bernard School with Mr. Carl T. Rowan being its most distinguished alum, becoming the first black Deputy Secretary of State and Director of the United States Information Agency. And whereas it is only appropriate to commemorate and recognize these monuments and chapter of our community's history. Therefore, I, McMinnville City Mayor Ryle Chastain, do hereby proclaim the month of February 2021 Black History Month across the city of McMinnville at this ceremony dedicating a historical marker at the Bernard School. 
And furthermore, I invite all residents of the city to join in honoring those of color and striving to achieve equality and inclusiveness for all. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Chastain. February will be a historic month for McMinnville and Warren County. The first Black History Museum dedicated to the legacy of African Americans who helped establish the foundation of this county will hold its grand opening on 20 February. Blacks have a rich history in Warren County and the museum's mission is to honor and preserve that history. Marvin Lusk, president of the board of directors of the museum, has led a diverse group of individuals with a singular focus on making the museum a success. Marvin would like to say a few words on behalf of the board. Hello, this is Marvin Luss. I'm chairman of the Black History Museum program, chairman of the board. This is exciting times for Warren County. Uh, the establishment of the Black History Museum is to honor and preserve the Black history of Warren County. Uh, so much has been lost, so much has not been told, and with the establishment of the museum, we have preserved and established the Black culture in here in Warren County. Just like in my situation, I was one of the first Blacks that integrated uh, Central High School back in 1964. So those are histories nobody knows about. We got several things, several speakers that will be speaking on behalf of the Black History Month of uh, things that, but the biggest thing I guess I'd like to say is that we will be having open house the 20th of February. And want to thank uh, uh, Ben Loman TV, as well as with uh, Mike uh, Gwynn in terms of working with you all to get this word out about our Black History program. Thank you. Thank you, Marvin. Every great accomplishment starts with a vision. The Black History Museum with the vision of Wayne Wolford. Wayne took his vision and turned it into reality through hard work, dedication, and assembling a group of like-minded individuals who shared his dream. It's only fitting that Wayne is the curator for the museum and he would like to take a few minutes to talk about his dream. Thank you, Mickey, for the introduction. Uh, my name is Wayne Wolford. I am the director curator for the Black History Museum of Warren County, Tennessee. And it's such a long title because there is such a thing as Warren County, Oregon. So this is why I put on here, Tennessee. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone to get a chance to come to the museum. It's located on 203 West Main Street. Uh, suite 13 of the building uh, uh, you actually can't get in the front of the building but you come around the side where you'll see the logo and the ramp and this is where the entrance is we are planning on having a program a ribbon cutting ceremony for the grand opening at the museum uh, weather permitting if not we have an inside uh, facility in which we can uh, hold pretty 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 much a uh, hundred people and this is going to be February the 20th, uh, 2020, and it's going to be at 10 a.m. And we're going to have a, just a, a kind of small ceremony. And we will also have you to come through. It will be a walkthrough because it is almost impossible to do a tour uh, in less than an hour. So what we want you to do is be able to come in and look and check things out. And then we will have someone, if, when you want to set up an appointment at, an, at a later date, then we will set up appointments and have you come in at that particular time so we can spend more time with you. Uh, things are going great. This was my dream. Uh, everybody has a premonition at one time. It's just up to them to listen to it. And so I listened to this one and uh, it came from upstairs. And he said, Wayne, uh, you're going to start a Black History Museum. You're retired now. You don't have anything to do. And I said, what? He said, yeah, yes, you're going to start a Black History Museum. I said, oh, <laughs> okay. So I accepted the challenge and everything is going smooth right now. Hopefully we can educate uh, people. Uh, I'm really interested in, in the kids because I was a substitute teacher. And I would really like the teachers 
uh, to bring their young ones, their classes, when the time comes after COVID and come through and, and get educated in the museum. Uh, we are going to be selling shirts and uh, we've got a couple of books that uh, you can buy. Uh, please be aware of COVID-19. We do want you to wear your mask and we want to deal with social distancing as much as possible. Thank you very much. Hope to see you soon. Thanks, Wayne. And we are proud of what you have done and look forward to the museum being a must see for local residents and those visiting our county. Speaking of the museum, I wanna highlight a current fundraising activity for the museum. It's called the Walt Way of Honor. The Walt Way of Honor is located at Ramsey Park and is a path that is paved with inscribed bricks that lead to the historical marker honoring Bernard School. Samples of the bricks are being shown on your screen now. And as you can see, they are a perfect way to recognize someone, an organization, or a business that holds a special place in your heart. We're asking anyone who would like to place a brick on the walkway to go to the museum or visit our Facebook page, Black History Museum of Warren County, Tennessee, for more information. For those of you who have already purchased brick, we extend a heartfelt thank you, and those bricks will be installed soon. The theme for Black History Month this year is Black Family, Representation, Identity, and Diversity. We are honored this year to have a guest speaker who is uniquely qualified to speak on the diverse history of the Black family. Dr. Carmelita Dotson is a lecturer in the Department of Social Work at Middle Tennessee State University, where she teaches undergraduate and graduate courses. She earned her bachelor's degree in sociology with a minor in health education from Tennessee State University. She completed her master's of science in social work from the University of Tennessee with a concentration in administration and planning. Dr. Dotson earned her doctorate degree from Tennessee State University's College of Education with a concentration in educational leadership. Dr. Dotson has over 30 years of practical experience in organizational development and management, cultural diversity practice, child welfare, and adoption and families. She currently serves as a faculty advisor for MTSU's student chapter of the National Association for Black Social Workers and the Department of Social Work's Student Cooperative Committee. Her research interests are child welfare, effective learning formats on student achievement, science learning strategies of teaching, and culture versus climate in organizational settings. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Carmelita Dotson. Good evening, and thank you, Mickey. Uh, and thank uh, the individuals from the McMinnville, uh, Tennessee Black History Museum for providing this opportunity to talk about and bring information to individuals about Black History Month. Uh, the theme of the 2021 theme, the Black Family Representation, Identity and Diversity, the impact of parenting, humanity, humility, and hope. So I'll be speaking in relationship to the overall theme, but caveating it with the impact of parenting, humanity, humility, and hope. Black history today and every day, we celebrate the foundation of Black History Month and its founding father, Dr. Carter G. Woodson. It's a time for us to celebrate and uplift the constant achievements of Black Americans and the impact on societal norms. So when we study or review history, it provides us an, with an opportunity to review the past in order to better understand present conditions or situations. And it provides an opportunity to learn from past accomplishments and mistakes. 
So for Black Americans, it provides an opportunity to make our own narrative and, uh, and not allow the narrative to be scripted for us, but instead by us for us. So from a social work perspective or social justice lens, we're grounded on humanitarian and the democratic ideas with the focus of meeting human needs and developing human potential and resources. Uh, Dr. Woodson was an educator, a historian, and visionary. He devoted his life's work to education and influencing the content of our nation's educational curriculum. Uh, Dr. Wood's aim was to change or inject the profound and lasting influences African uh, American history has represented or lack of cultural identity and awareness of Black communities in the U.S. and global. Uh, Dr. Woodson contended that the social, political, economical, and educational failures of Negroes was linked to there being a lack of their true history or even knowing what the true history is. So history uh, shows a chronological uh, pictorial, uh, which you will see, of past achievements, mistakes, and failures. And it provides valuable lessons for the present and the future. Uh, history report records uh, the past implications for present and future. So many historical accounts that have been represented of the Black American family or individuals has typically been with struggling and the acceptance of America. Uh, there is no struggle where there's no progress. So even though our, our Black Americans journey to Americas was through the Middle Passage, uh, that is leading, leaving from the African continent, uh, West Indies areas and the Caribbeans and coming to the United States. And so it's important to understand how Black Americans have transcended through movement uh, from Middle Passage until now. So during the Middle Passage, about 12 million Africans were brought to America. Uh, then in 1911, our population uh, is continuing to grow with 11 points with uh, Black Americans representing 11.6 of the population. And then 1916 to 1970 is the Great Migration where African-Americans migrated from the South to the North for more opportunities, uh, more opportunities for economics, for education or acceptance. Then in the 60s, uh, the population was at about 10.5%. We rep at Black Americans represented 10.5 of the population. And in the 70s, again, constantly increasing with 11.1 uh representation of the population and just in 2019 represented 13.4 of the population and when i give these statistics because of how we record statistics in the united states these are the statistics showing individuals indicating that they are black or african-american uh, but there also are opportunities where individuals could indicate that they are of mixed races, uh, which is a whole different uh, number. The Black family is not the typical family that we see and hear about in mainstream uh, media. Uh, it has often been stereotyped and vilified from the days of slavery to its own time. So typically when we think of a family, we think of mother, father, children, and extended family. But as I just indicated to you uh, previously, showing how uh, Blacks came to America, you can see that the family structure immediately took uh, a change. Uh, due to slavery, uh, families were split up. 
uh, whether it be mother, child, grandparents. So oftentimes uh, our family is not, black American families are not going to be seen like the typical family you might see on TV, for instance, the Brady Bunch. So from the time, from the arrival to the Americas, the black families have had to adjust to other, to the other, to others way of life. And it often limited their ability of representation, identity, and diversity. And just to think, the history of the black family has been so tattered by occurrences of afflictions such as slavery, segregation, Jim Crow, Katrina, and now COVID-19. And somehow through all of these afflictions, the black family has remained strong and in some instances got stronger, survived and continued to thrive. Continuing to um, be trailblazers, legend makers and finding hope for new stories. Uh, Robert Hill stated in his book, The Strengths of the Black Family, that black families have some of the strongest bonds within their family unit, especially when it comes to their children and elderly members. They also have a strong work ethic and adaptability within the traditional family roles. He will also states that they have a high achievement and religious orientation. All of these strengths create the black family, keep it together and surviving despite the odds and the statistics that have been stacked against them. So when we think of representation, representation is a description or portrayal of someone or something in a particular way or of being in a particular nature. Uh, I started out using the term Black Americans. Uh, so it oftentimes is a personal choice of whether individuals want to say African American families or Black uh, families. Uh, a lot of this has to do again with the his with the history that has been experienced, and where others perhaps did not know what the narratives of their history was or not being able to connect with the fact that our ancestry goes all the way back to the continent of Africa. I'll use the term black family to represent all people and cultures of African descent. Uh, the structure of the black family has changed due to societal changes, which was something that I mentioned earlier, showing the timeline of from when uh, Africans arrived to the Americas and up until today. Uh, some of those changes uh, have been uh, dealt with because of biases due to cultural experiences, which can explain some of the current, uh, perhaps, attitudes. So, for instance, uh, the Black family is often characterized like white families, measuring the Black family's history or occurrences as the same as those who are white. And there are two totally different experiences. Uh, so the Black family, uh, or any family for that matter, should not be put or defined into one structure, but to look at how they are represented, how they identify, and how diverse they are. Those are the important pieces that we can't put every body into one circle. We are all different. Identity is the fact of being who or what a person or thing is. So historically, the Black family's identity has been rooted in the culture by their religion, their generational beliefs, traditions, and their practices, which influence the individual and their so social values. So the struggle has been in who we are and where did we come from? So it's important, not just in February or Black History Month that we share the narrative, but we need to share the narrative on a regular basis. This is who we are, where we came from, and where we need to go. So taking time to reflect back on the middle passage 
helps to provide us with an opportunity to shape our cultural identity uh, of America through mass population and relocation. Um, it also helps us to understand the key and the triangle trading system that boosted Euro, uh, Europe's economic even further. So it's important to understand uh, what those pieces of the triangle mean, uh, what it meant then, and what it means now. Uh, however, it is important to listen closely to see how an individual refers to one another or ask specifically how they prefer to be identified. As I mentioned earlier, I will be using the term today, Black Americans versus African Americans. That is the preference or that's how I prefer to be identified. So asking a person who they are and how they want to be identified is very important versus uh, using what you think the, what society has typically placed upon a person. It is important to teach our brothers and sisters this importance, for instance, in, in understanding identity and using term and titles such as Mr., Mrs., Doctor, and followed by their last name. It represents a sign of respect in the culture until it's otherwise told. Uh, it empowers that person, and it also uh, demonstrates a rejection of the historical uh, dehumanizing uh, occurrences when whites called Black American adults by their first names, but expected Blacks to refer to whites by title and name. So again, it wasn't equal. So it is very important to be mindful that an individual's personal identity of self is often formed not only by what society says, but sometimes from their own family members and others in their life. Diversity. Diversity focuses on the differences, the differences that make a person distinct and unique from another person. Uh, human diversity involves the recognition of differences and similarities that make a person distinct, uh, unique from another person. Uh, diversity is the practice or quality of including or involving people from a range of different social and ethnic backgrounds and of different genders, sexual orientations, and et cetera. Uh, the struggle has been, uh, again, and who we are and where did we come from? And it was completed by designed by the slave masters when individuals were stripped of their names, their language, their culture, their customs, and their history. So being able to identify and, rep and show a person's representation of who they are, what their identity is, and what uh, realm of diversity do they fit in. Uh, we all have perhaps a different religious practice. We may, we, there are different sexual orientations, there are different job levels, uh, there are different physical abilities. We all have had different experiences, there are different ages. And so when you're dealing with individuals, you need to keep all of these things into consideration. So it's not just one thing. Okay. Uh, the impact on parenting. Um, because of some of the historical uh, occurrences that have occurred in Black families, the impact of parenting um, has a direct correlation that goes back to our history. Uh, so important things for parenting is the family and cultural values, uh, kinship bonds, and role, reflex, role flexibility. So it is very important that when uh, working with and understanding how Black individuals parent, that we need to understand these three uh, perspectives. Uh, and when I say 
<clears throat> excuse me, family and cultural values, understanding what's important for the family. What do they value? Do they value family time? Uh, do they value going to church? Do they value working in the community? Do they value connectiveness? All of these things are important. And when we think of kinship bonds, kinship bonds in the Black family is not just blood, but it's also non-related. Again, thinking back to how we came to America, uh, families were broken up, separated. And so now was the opportunity to develop other types of kinship bonds uh, to be successful and to prosper. So an individual and in a particular community may have uh, kin with uh, or fictional type of bonds. For instance, uh, you may often hear Big Mama. Big Mama may not necessarily be blood related. Big Mama may be the elder female in the community that has looked after the community and, and is well respected and should be an important person that is put into the life of the parenting of our children. Uh, which goes to role reflexibility, role flexibility. Uh, most individuals, again, when they think of families, they think of mother and father. But because of our separations that has occurred from the middle passage until now, we've had to be very flexible about our roles. One, okay. Uh, so with role flexibility, uh, now, more and more uh, Af Black females are having to be in the workforce. So that means that they're away from home and not necessarily ha having additional time to maybe parent, do some of the parenting responsibilities. So that's where the cousin, uh, the, the aunt, uh, the neighbor, the big mama in the neighborhood steps in to provide some additional uh, structure and parenting for those kids. We often see a negative connotation as it relates to uh, the Black father and the family. And we think that they don't want to be there or they don't want to help. But the absence of them being there is not because necessarily they want to, but it might be because of time and energy. Because again, uh, families are so spread out. Uh, families are having to live in communities that can provide them with the economical resources uh, that are needed to survive. So for instance, you're gonna move to the city that has the job openings and so on and so forth. And because of the various, because of the, the changing in roles between fathers and mothers within the home, often there's not a clear distinction of who does what, which may make it a little difficult for the children to understand what are actually the roles of the female, what are the actual roles of the male. So within the home, they may see that the female is taking on female, what are considered female typical roles, as well as roles from the male perspective. So when they become an adult, it may be confusing for them to understand where their placement is. Again, what is their identity? How should they proceed? You know, do, are they the primary caregiver? Are they the primary a breadwinner in the family. Uh, so typically, um, because of females having to work more outside of the home, there may not be as much time uh, for just what we consider some of the basic child rearing things because they're outside of the home for a great period of time. So it may create a balance between uh, normal child rearing uh, disciplinary types of things. Um, and so because religion plays a, also a vital importance with the Black families, because of this, uh, Black families may rely on religious institutions to provide some additional support 
and parenting of the kids. So rather than send their children maybe to a camp uh, like, like white families may do for the summer, uh, black families will send their, may send their kids to church related activities. For instance, sending their children to uh, vacation Bible school or Sunday school or church related activities where their white counterparts may send them to a summer camp. Uh, religion uh, is vitally important. It is something that black families carry from the continent of Africa to now. Uh, it is a source of comfort. It is something to re rely upon. Historically, uh, religious institutions or churches uh, for the Black family have been very resourceful. Uh, that might be where they get resources to find out about housing for educational needs, to find out things as far as, it's, as it relates to health. I even think now with the current environment that we we're in and experiencing COVID-19, particularly in the Middle Tennessee area or Nashville to be specific, a lot of African-American churches have played a very instrumental role in actually uh, getting out to their community members to share with them the importance of staying healthy, how to get the vaccine and actually bringing it directly to them. Uh, that has been a role that has gone, that has been very instrumental for years. Uh, oftentimes within that structure, that's where uh, parents may find a mentor or a tutor for their child to help them uh, for any educational needs. Because oftentimes um, families might be a little skeptical of educational institutions about the testing procedures, for instance. Um, Historically, parents have kind of shied away from psychological testing because it has often led to their child being placed in special, special education programs, which might not have been the mo may not have been the accurate plan for that child. So they feel comfortable, uh, they trust the individuals within the religion, religious institution of the churches to make uh, uh, an assessment of what's needed best from them from the Black perspective. Um, uh, uh, when it comes to uh, re rearing uh, the male child, uh, it is often times that it is looked that the mother may appear harder or provide harder discipline to the male child someone from the outside might see that as some type of abuse. But in actuality, the mother is just trying to make sure that the individual is strong enough and has the resources and stays on the correct path to get to the ultimate goal. So for instance, um, in, in, in a lot of black uh, households, uh, parents are having to talk to their children, particularly their male child, about being safe in the current environment. That is no different from the Middle Passage, slavery, civil rights, 2020. So having to have conversations about when to be in, how to address people, what's the conversation. So there are a lot of stressors on a regular basis that the black families are having to do with parenting that maybe the average uh, family would not consider. But just having to have daily conversations about being safe, uh, being in when we are supposed to be free, but freedom has not maybe come for everyone. Uh, so making sure that their kids are safe. So they're constantly having to have these hard conversations with them about what that means and being uh, so that they can continue to strive on for the future. Okay. So one of the um, impact impacts that uh, parents have is to make sure that their children are represented correctly of who they are and what they want to be 
and not being limited to what they want to do. Uh, being able to see the future and to strive for the future, but also getting assistance or support to help them with the future. Uh, the hope is with the diversity is that is the reason for thinking that our desire may need or to be fulfilled. So again, constantly showing representation of who we are, being able to identify the person of who we are and the many different uh, roles that we feel, whether it's age, whatever it's uh, music abilities or science abilities, but to be recognized and not allowing obstacles to get into our way. I leave you with um, one of my favorite quotes and poets, and that's Maya Angelou. And again, this is about, about Black history. But won't it be beautiful when Black history and Native American history and Jewish history and all of US history is taught from one book and it's just us history. Thank you and have a good evening. Thank you, Dr. Dotson, for those inspiring words. We all know how important family is to all of us and your personal insights provided us with a very unique perspective. No Black History Month program will be complete without a rendition of Lift Every Voice and Sing. Curtis Strode will lead us in singing the Black National Anthem, and we ask you to join in wherever you are. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven rings, rings with the harmony of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise, high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of a new day begun. Let us march on till victory is won. Stony the road we trot, bitter the chastening rod, felt in the days when hope unborn had died. Yet with a steady beat, have not our weary feet come to a place for which our Father sighed. We have come over the way with the tears has been watered. We have come treading the path of the blood of the slaughtered. Out from the gloomy past, till now we stand at last, where the white gleam of our bright star is cast. Thanks, Curtis. Great job as always. There are a number of people and organizations who were instrumental in making today's event a reality. I would like to acknowledge them at this time. Ben Loman Channel 6, 
Karen Wilson and Kevin Bond have worked tirelessly putting together this telecast for Black History Month. And they have also worked on other programs that will be airing on Channel 6 and other platforms. This was a new experience for all of us, but their patience and expertise made the experience a lot easier. The Black History Museum of Warren County, Tennessee, the sponsor for this year's program. We thank the museum for their sponsorship. The staff of Magnus Library, whose photos you have been seeing throughout today's event. Brad Walker and his staff have always supported the Black History Month programs in McMinnville. And once again, they came through to make this year's event a success. Our government representatives, County Executive Jimmy Haley, McMinnville Mayor Ryle Chastain. Our guest speaker, Dr. Carmelita Dotson. There are many others who gave their time and energy to make, but to make sure I don't miss anyone, I'll just say an all encompassing thank you. We hope you enjoyed today's presentation and thanks for watching. Now to end our program, I ask Brother Jeffrey Martin of the East End Drive Church of Christ to lead us in a closing prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, we thank thee for this day. We pray for those that are sick and those who have lost loved ones. We just want to thank you for all the many rich blessings that you have given us from the past to this present time. We thank thee for the speakers and to all those who have participated in ribbon cutting and dedication ceremony. We pray that many will come from far and near to visit this museum to learn of the Black history in Warren County. But most of all, today, Father, we wanna thank you for your dear son who came from heaven to this sinful world where he suffered, bled, and died on that old rugged cross that we all may have a right to the tree of life. These and all other blessings we ask in the name of your dear son, Jesus Christ, amen.